So I wrote in my diary, this is sort of an diary, I think it's very funny, that in my diary I said, I really just dream. I have this dream. One day I will meet one other homosexual. Dreams do come true. <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. So anyway, Daddy found my diary and read it too, which I had it in a locked box, but you know, parents sent, don't trust your parents, they'll break open. <laughs> they'll break open your locked boxes and read your diary. And he confronted me. And he said, he fortunately had gone to an enlightened psychiatrist who told him your son will always be this way. And he said to me, I read your diary, and I know, why I know why you're gay, because when you were a very little kid, four or five years old, you came into the bathroom crying, Daddy, why did Mommy go out and leave me? She had been taken away to a tuberculosis sanitarium the night before. Of course, that's not the reason I'm gay, but he gave my father the possibility of understanding. And he told me, he said, I know you'll always be this way because the psychiatrist told me so. He said, I just want you to know that I want to do everything I can to see that you are the best adjusted homosexual you can be <laughs> because I won't be here always to protect you. So I tell you today that I stand here proudly on the strong, loving shoulders of my father. And I hope, and I hope, I just so much hope that the advances we made in 60, the last 65 years have made it possible there are many, many more people that have parents like him. In 58, I showed him Mattachine literature. I discovered Gay Life in New York and discovered there was actually an organized gay movement called Mattachine. I think I mentioned I became the 16th member of the Mattachine Society, very small. For those of you who don't know, Mattachine was a society for gay rights founded by Harry Hay in 1950. Before Stonewall, people don't realize there was literally 20 years of activism I had several little different groups, but the total of people involved were only a couple hundred. So I took my father and I showed him the Mattachine literature because you know, I thought he'd be you know, interested or excited. And he read it. And first he said, and I would love to wish he, was, wish he lived long enough for me to bring him to see today. He said to me, I don't think you're gonna get very far with this. <laughs> I, even I am amazed how far we've gotten. But then he paused and kind of almost reluctantly said, son, I love you. Just do me one favor, will you? Please don't involve my good name. So here was Charles Gervin Hayden Jr., the senior, asking Charles Gervin Hayden Jr. not to use our shared name. And that was the day that Randy Wicker was born. And it just happened to be in June 1958, which Pride Month, and that was 12 years before the first Pride even existed. <laughs> so today, I stand before you as a 65-year-old Randy Wicker, trapped, trapped in an 85-year-old Charlie Hayden body. <laughs> <laughs> no, not yet.